it's unlike the Forte, when you bring the audio back, it still retains the nicer qualities of the higher end piece of equipment that you know I have here. So I can kind of feel in some way that I'm taking the studio with me when I go. We're here at Messer on the Universal Audio booth with Lev, and he's going to tell us about this new Apollo unit. So good they named it twice, apparently. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so yeah, Apollo 16 is what we're announcing at the show. It's the newest addition to the Apollo family. Uh, Apollo shipped almost a year ago now. Uh, it's become very, very successful because it was built on three main principles. Great sounding conversion, great, great sounding analog, uh, real-time UAD processing, run our plugins in low latency or in the DAW, uh, and then Thunderbolt. Apollo 16 has that same principle in mind, but it's more targeted at the professional customer who has preamps, might have a headphone or cue system, and just wants to integrate it with outboard gear, a summing mixer, or a console, or maybe all three. So this is just line level I.O.? Line it? level in and out, 16 channels via DB25, industry standard. Uh, all of the inputs and outputs are plus four and minus 10 switchable, 24 bit, 192 kilohertz conversion. It sounds incredible. Uh, and it runs all of our plugins in low latency on the inputs, or you can use them as a AU, VST, or RTAS plugin inside of your DAW, all simultaneously. So does it have the same DSP architecture as the original Apollo unit? It does, so four Shark DSPs in the box, it's a quad version only, uh, whereas the original Apollo, yeah, we did a two or a four. Um, but yeah, you know, lots of processing on board, and the Thunderbolt part of it is really cool too. If you hook it up via Thunderbolt, you get even lower latency with plugins in the DAW, uh, obviously, you know, the latency for your monitoring is all sub two millisecond regardless of whether it's FireWire or Thunderbolt because we do all the plug-in processing in the box before it ever goes to your computer. That's really, you know, the producer of latency is going to your computer and coming back to your interface. Apollo's been incredibly popular because it just doesn't have to go to the computer in order to do low latency with plugins. That's why people are really liking that workflow. So if you already have an Apollo, can you stack one of these units with it? It's a great question. We're getting that, you know, the first version of the software isn't going to support mixed multi-unit. Uh, the next version of the software will support one or two Apollo 16s in a single system or one or two Apollos in a single system. But we're hearing that request, you know, we're definitely going to look at the feasibility of it. But for now, it's, you know, if you're an Apollo customer, maybe add on a second Apollo. Uh, if you're looking at the Apollo 16 and considering it, you can scale that up to you know, two of those for 32 channels of I.O. So of course the software is an integral part of this package, uh, including the ability to um, save settings from here in your door, which is really important, isn't it? It absolutely is. So what we're looking at here is the console application. Now, Apollo has a very similar console application and we've updated the entire application and Apollo will get a lot of these great features. Um, this is where you load up all of our plugins and get you know, sub two millisecond latency with, uh, with any of our plugins. Um, but we've made a bunch of great improvements, things like the updated Q mixer with the small faders instead of the knobs, much better to look at. We've also got you know, a new feature called virtual I.O. Virtual I.O. is going to be huge for the people who want to take their virtual instruments and route them into low latency plugins. You just go out of your DAW, into a virtual channel, and then you can load up the UAD plugins with no latency. Um, you just mentioned a really key feature in our recall plugin. This is the console recall plugin, and very simple. All you really need to know is that you turn on the sync button, and you save this, the DAW session, and it will automatically recall all of the settings of your console in your DAW session. Pro Tools, Logic, Live, Ableton, anything. It works great because you never have to think about, oh, what session was I using when I was tracking that day? Hit the sync button, it automatically recalls. So it's really, really cool. Um, and again, virtual I.O. will actually get added to Apollo and Apollo 16. So you know, if you're an Apollo customer, most of those customers are using virtual instruments, they're going to get this feature too. The other thing that's cool about virtual I.O. is you can actually record it back into your DAW. So it really is like taking the outputs of an audio interface, plugging it into a desk, inserting some outboard gear, and then recording it back like you would normally do in the analog world. You can do the exact same thing with Apollo 16 and the Apollo interface using virtual channels. So it's a really, really great feature. One of the last things I want to talk about in terms of software and unique to Apollo 16 is its new Q mixer. So the Qs are sort of a replacement for uh, the headphone mixers that are on Apollo. There's no headphone outputs on Apollo 16. We're assuming you have some sort of a, a headphone amp or a Q system. But what you do is you would set up a mix right here and you'd send it to Q1 and then you would take Q1 and go to any output. So you get an option of where it goes. No headphone amps, you say, well, I'm going to hook up outputs three and four directly to my headphone amp, uh, and that's the way you use it. But the other thing that's great about cues is you can take any input, 
go through plugins and send it to any output. Maybe you want to do this for a live processor. So if you wanted to use a Lexicon 224 Reverb as a live sound processor with an Apollo 16, you can totally do that. So a great amount of flexibility in the routing. You get you know, output to the console, or output of your DAW into the console, all the live inputs, and then direct outputs to any of the analog outputs or to the ACBU stereo output. So tons of flexibility. Customers have been asking for this. Uh, the pro customer is really going to benefit from this because they have a console and they need to integrate you know, all of this great UAD processing. Now they've got a great interface to do that with. So does this come at a pro price or is it the sort of thing that Project Studio Guy can afford? It's a great question. It's about 500 bucks more than the current Apollo, which we consider you know, a professional piece of gear that's just within reach of that sort of Project Studio, the serious composer, songwriter, remixer guy. Uh, so yeah, twenty nine ninety nine US, about the same in euros, uh, gets you an Apollo sixteen. So for what you're getting and the sound quality you're getting, it's actually incredible. Uh, and shipping sometime in the summer? Uh, so, uh, shipping this quarter, so very very soon. Yeah, excellent. Sometime in May. We look forward to trying it. Thanks, Lev. Awesome. Thank you.